What's up folks, Mike here at Willing Watches and welcome to the video. In today's video, we're gonna be having a quick discussion about lubrication. Um, I was recently contacted by someone on, uh, on Instagram who said that they couldn't find any videos or information out there uh, with regards to what lubricants you should be looking to buy if you're taking up watch repair as a hobby. So this video is just a very quick video to touch on the top three lubricants I think that you would need to get as a hobbyist watch repairer uh, so that you can do a fairly decent job at home. Now this is intended for those of you out there that have uh, purchased a watch on eBay or a car boot sale or you have a pocket watch or maybe you have a family watch that you think that you'd like to have a go at trying to repair but you don't know what lubricants you need to, go, uh, to, to buy in order to do a, a fairly decent uh, job. So this video is just to help you uh, clarify um, what you need to get because there are hundreds of different types of lubricants uh, out there and each of them can be quite expensive so this is to help you figure out which ones that you would need to get to do a good job without costing an absolute fortune now as a professional I'm required to have a very large array of lubricants uh, for the various watch movements that come in that require very specific types of uh, lubrication but this is just gonna to touch on the three main lubricants that I use on a daily basis and that you can use uh, to repair watch movements at home. So the top three that I'm gonna go through, uh, there are slight variations in these lubricants, but I'm gonna list in the description below the three basic lubricants that you would need. Um, and you can go with those, uh, those three lubricants that I've listed. Now the variations that I have in mind is that I use a fluorescent type of lubrication and this helps me with uh, quality control so that I can see that the lubrication is correctly applied and it isn't moving into parts of the watch where I don't want it to go. So just for example, I'm gonna use my um, UV pen and you'll see that this, this uh, lubricant is actually like a fluorescent yellow, it actually shines under UV light and the same here with this uh, this grease this is also uh, UV reactive grease the lubricants that I list in the description will not be um, UV reactive the standard greases uh, are just fine but in my workshop I like to use fluorescent lubricants um, so I can maintain quality control so the first lubricant that you would need to get will be a form of grease. Now this is a Mobius 8300 series grease. Uh, this is 8300 and this is 8301. 8301 is a very good natural grease and it is very good for lots of applications. So that would be the first lubrication I would recommend getting. The next one I would recommend getting would be a Microgliss D series lubricant. This is Microgliss D5 and it's a medium viscosity oil uh, which means it's reasonably thick but not overly so and it's a very good general purpose oil for lots of things. This can go from clocks to, uh, to watch movement so this is a very good lubricant to have. And lastly the last oil that I would recommend would be Cintalube 9010. This is 9010 FL because it's fluorescent but the standard 9010 which is a very pale blue in colour is the one that you want to go for. It comes in a two mil tube usually, which is the smallest amount I think you can buy it in. And two milliliters is enough to service several thousands of watches. So you'll, you'll never run out of the lubricant because you only really apply a very small amount. So the 9010 is, is a very good lubricant to have as well. So these three lubricants, three lubricants come with three different reasons and three different kind of categories. So you have a grease, which is obviously fairly thick, but it's not like super thick grease. And then you have this, which is a medium oil. And then you have the 9010, which is a very fine oil. Now the 9010 is a fine oil and it's good for very fast moving parts. Things such as balance capsules, the pallet stones, train wheel gears, are fast moving escape wheels uh, and pallet staff points as well. So 9010 is for fast moving things, which is all very good. Again, I'll put this all in the description below. The Microgliss D5 or any of the D series uh, microglisses would be good for things that are slower moving and have a slightly higher torque. Things like center wheel arbors and uh, uh, the application on cannon pinions, uh, the outer barrel arbor walls, crown wheels, uh, and things like that. So that's a, that's a slower moving oil. And it's good for uh, thicker, slower moving high torque areas. The Natural Grease 83 series um, can be used for lots of things. It can be used for the inside of the barrel arbor. It can be used for the main spring, setting lever spring, setting lever, yoke, yoke spring, clutch, wheel, winding pinion, anything that is metal on metal, or anything that is very slow moving 
uh, and requires grease. It's it's no good for uh, things that turn such as wheels or train wheels, things like that. But this is more for levers or anything that's metal on metal. So those are the three lubricants that I would uh, pick and go with if you're looking at taking it up as a, as a hobby watch repairer. Uh, and those are the three reasons I state why you would need these three liquids. Uh, uh, well, a grease and two liquids. Strictly speaking, you, you could do an entire movement using just D5, but where you would run into trouble with that is if you're using D5 on the train wheel gears or the balance jewels, things like that, this is quite a thick oil and over time it will dry out and slow the train wheels down and you'll end up having to service the movement again um, sooner rather than later. So that's why we have the different oils for their different applications and that's where uh, they work best. So that's it for this video. Hopefully this is uh, this is proven helpful and removed some of the confusion for those of you out there that are looking to start watch repair and you're not sure what lubricants to buy. Um, although these three combined will be quite an expensive purchase, uh, it will save you hundreds of pounds instead of trying to buy all the other different lubricants only to find out that you never needed them in the first place. So go into the description below and you'll see the three lubricants that I would recommend and the reasons why, and hopefully that'll help you out. Um, in future videos, I do hope to be doing, um, hopefully not too far in the distant future, uh, with regards to all the other different kinds of lubrication and things that are related to the lubrication. I hope to be doing some more videos on that uh, in the future, including how to apply lube to different areas of the watch and uh, the quantities in which you do that, what kind of tools you need, and uh, all sorts of things like that hopefully will be coming up in the future. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, leave a like. If you want to see more videos, click subscribe and hit that notification bell uh, for more videos in the future. Uh, but until then, take care and uh, have fun.